memory play uh, in which the, the playwright, Arthur Miller, uh, towards the end of his life, thinks back about the breakup of his marriage to Marilyn Monroe on the set of The Misfits. Now, in the play, uh, Arthur is the narrator, as well as one of the characters in the play, and there is um, a little bit of doubling up because there are a lot of characters, um, but we'll try to keep it as clear as possible for you. So um, we have our Arthur Miller over here. Uh, we have our Marilyn Monroe. Uh, we have John Houston. Uh, Clark Gable on that side. Montgomery Clift, that would be you. Uh, Eli Wall, again. Um, Elliot Kazan, again. <laughs> Saul Bellows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Strasburg over there. It sounds confusing that he's playing approximately nine different roles here, but I promise it's not that bad. They're all separate for the next one. So, see, please. There were now just two more roles we needed to fill. For Gay's buddy Guido, we signed Eli Wallach, whom Marilyn already knew and whose work she admired. And for Pierce, the bull-riding gypsy with a soul as bruised as his bones, we went after an actor whose real-life wounds were just as open, just as raw. The masterful but often mercurial Montgomery Clift. Monty, I soon discovered, was one of Marilyn's favorites. I just adore Monty, you know? He's one of my favorites. Really? Do you know what they say about him, don't you? No, what? For starters, he's a drug-addled depressive who wrapped his car around a tree and nearly tore off his cheek. Plus, he flaunts his gay lovers around wherever he happens to be on, whatever set he happens to be on. Not to mention the fact that he has most of his directors speaking in tongues by the time they're even halfway through the shoot. Uh, I know, isn't he wonderful? He's the only person in Hollywood more screwed up than I am. I just wish I could get him to co-star in all my movies. Both Monty and Eli were method actors products of New York's celebrated actor studio and its equally celebrated gurus, Lee and Paula Strasberg. Marilyn, despite my dire words of caution, was also becoming a disciple. The method, as it was known, encouraged actors to discover their inner character, the character within themselves. Clark Gable, I should add, was of a different generation and not what you might term a true believer. Lights up on the misfits set before shooting has even begun. Monty and Eli are seated at the table drinking coats. They appear to be enjoying a private joke. Clark enters and, for a beat or two, silently regards the other actors. I hear you boys are both method fellas. Uh, just like Brando, huh? Yeah, except he has all the money. Yeah, that was all the awards. Clark sits down next to them. You know, I, I could never figure that fella out. Why's that, Clark? Well, for one thing, I, I could never, never figure out what he's saying. I, I swear, it's like the boy's got marbles in his mouth or something. That's funny. The critics seem to like it. Critics? It's getting us to the only thing these damn fools do like is the stuff I can't understand. What's that brand, though? He's always... What's the word I'm looking for? Emoting. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's what he does, Clark. It's who he is. Whatever role he gets, he sinks his teeth in all the way. Well, I can tell. He's a fellow with a mighty big appetite. You boys catch him in sayonara? Man, I gotta tell you, if that fella didn't pack on 30 pounds in the streetcar, then I don't know jack about shit. Well, he may have gained a little, but I thought it was 30. Oh no, I'm telling you, it was 30, all right. I know you method boys like to eat the scenery, but if you're not real careful, that fella's gonna wind up eating the whole fucking studio. John enters the set. Clark, if you're spouting any bullshit to these boys, please cut it out. I'll have you know that's my job, not yours. I bet your old John, he's not a method fella. Be mindful what you say, John. Remember, Marilyn's one of us now. Ah, yes, the method. Well, the good news, gentlemen, is that the best method I'm personally aware of to find your inner voice, though not necessarily a coherent voice, mind you, is an answer to a certain silky beverage. Jack Daniels, anyone? <laughs> and so they drink. And then they drink some more until finally John got them on the set and down to business. Lights on John, shooting a scene with Clark and Eli on the set of The Misfits. And action. 
I just met me a squirrel sweet enough to eat. A girl who's just sweet enough to eat. Gay, fine looking woman. <laughs> sweet enough to eat, that's a laugh. Cut! Cut is right. What? Those two bit lines of yours, that's what I cut. I mean, sweet enough to eat, who even says crap like that? I've never heard anyone say that. Did you ever hear anyone say that? I did, in fact. The only once. Spotlight up on Ilya Kazan, the 40 ish man, dapper in a snazzy sports jacket, circa 1951. He is holding the rotary phone. Believe me, Arthur, she's sweet enough to eat. <laughs> in 1951, Ilya Kazan was the hottest director in all of show business. All my sons, death of a salesman, a streetcar named Desire. His energy woke up the theater and brought new life to Broadway. And it wasn't just the stage, there were movies too. Classic movies, important movies. Movies that harvested honors and showered gold on him and everyone around him. Those who knew him well considered him a genius. Those who knew him best considered him to be one of the horniest hound dogs on the other coast. Believe me, Arthur, she's sweet enough to eat. I've never met anyone like her. I've heard that song before, you know. Oh, no, not a like, not song like this, you haven't. She's only been in a couple of movies up on the screen, just a minute here, a minute there. But I'm telling you, she's special. So bring her yourself. I would if I could, but I can't. I have to be in New York. She's absolutely gorgeous, aren't you? She's, uh, well, she also likes intellectual men, and let's face it, after me, uh, you're the next best thing around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do hand me down, so. Oh, trust me, you'll, you'll do this one. Yeah, this one you'll love. She'll fit you like a glove, right? Take my word for it, a fucking velvet glove. Whenever we needed a break from New York, Ellie and, I, Ellie and I would hang around Hollywood, most often at the home of this big shot producer who, lucky for us, liked to cruise the Riviera from that set of cliff. The house was a model, <coughs> with gold-plated toilets, more rooms than a brothel, and a kidney-shaped pool half the size of Bel Air. We were both married at the time, but hell, our wives weren't there, and we were young, and it was Hollywood, and Besides, what's the point of staying at a place with a kidney-shaped pool half the size of Bel Air if you can't share with friends? Did I mention we threw a lot of parties? Let's on Marilyn at a, ho at a Hollywood party. Strangely enough, Marilyn is alone, seated on one of two side-by-side -side chairs in the corner of the room. She is reading a paperback novel. Arthur, now in a sports jacket, walks up to her, drink in hand. Miss Monroe? Yes? I'm Arthur Miller. Oh. Oh! <laughs> I'm your... Actually, I'm not sure what I am. My date for the evening? Exactly. Your date for the evening. May I sit down? Yes, yes, of course. We spoke on the phone, remember? Elliot's friend? Oh, yes, Elliot's friend. It's, it's just... Just what? Just I thought you'd be older. Really? And why is that? I don't know. Maybe because he said he'd won some sort of prize. The one from Sweden, right? Actually, it, it was the Pulitzer, not the Nobel. <laughs> God, now I've really stuck my foot in it, haven't I? I always get the two of them confused. You're not the only one. A lot of people do. Really? You're not kidding? No. Why would I be kidding? Besides, I don't know you well enough to kid. At least not yet. What are you reading? Oh, this is nothing, really. What do you mean, it's nothing? It's a book. What is it about? You mean you really want to know? Of course I want to know. Why else would I have asked? May I have a sip of your drink, Mr. Miller? Of course. But please call me Arthur. Arthur hands Marilyn his drink. She takes a sip, then very seductively licks her lips with her tongue. She hands the drink back to Arthur. Are you sure that's all you want? For now, Arthur. That's all I want for now. As for later on, who knows? I mean, who can tell what anyone's going to want later on, right? So, for a while, I linked up with her whenever I flew to L.A. And Elliot Kazan? Well, he, can, he continued to link up with her as well. Look at it this way, Arthur. We're both doing her a favor. I mean, I told you she liked intellectuals, right? Well, now she has a film. In more ways than one. Galleries, bookstores, museums, you name it. And that's where I took her. And Marilyn took it all in, as much as I could give her. That's what she took. And meanwhile, I was, I too was learning a lot. I learned there was East Coast time, and there was West Coast time, and there's also Maryland time which was somehow never quite the same as West Coast time. Day or night, wherever I took her, Marilyn kept me waiting. Sometimes an hour, sometimes two, sometimes three or more. But then again, Marilyn always kept everyone waiting. Lights on the set of The Misfits. 
Clark, Monty, and Eli are playing cards at a table as John nervously paces the floor. You might as well sit yourself down and take a load off, John. It's likely to be a while. A while? It's already been an hour and a half. Who cares? I'm having fun. Aren't you boys having fun? Hey, you know me. I'm always having fun. That's why directors love having me around so much, right, John? Because of all the fun I'm always having. I just hope she's okay. Where the hell is Arthur? He should be keeping an eye on her. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Now, Billy Wilder, he buzzed me last spring. You know, a sort of a friendly heads up. Hear that, boys? If it weren't for us, these old bastards would have nothing to talk about. All I can say is, some like it hot was a whole lot funnier on screen than off. I heard she was sick. I don't know. Girl looked pretty damn healthy to me. Maybe uh, her kind of sickness doesn't show. What the hell does that mean? It means uh, maybe you can't spot sickness when you look at her. Oh, I see you. You mean this kind of sickness. Uh, that's, that's not what he meant. No? Then what? Well, it's none of my business, but you know what happens to a lot of them, don't you? Uh, female trouble? <laughs> female trouble happens. <coughs> well, let me tell you something. The only one walking through here with female trouble is that poor son of a bitch, Arthur. You know, Clark, you really should talk to her. Me? Why me? Because the girl has great respect for you, that's why. It's obvious. Oh, no, don't direct me into this. I, I mean, I like the kid and all. I, I think she's great. A natural, really, but... Uh, but what? When the shoot's over, I'm gonna zip my ass away from here as fast as I can. John shades his eyes from the sun and looks out into the distance. Praise Jesus. I think that's her leaving the hotel. Why don't you put your glasses on so you can see what you're doing? I don't need my damn glasses. Looks like someone's with her. Arthur? No, 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 it looks like someone else. A woman. Maybe it's a gynecologist. That's it. Well, lucky. Oh, no, no, I, I doubt she's a doctor. It, she's all dressed in black, not white. Did you just say black? Yes, from head to toe, including... What the hell is that, a veil? It's Paula. Who? Paula Strasberg. What the hell is she doing in a veil? Someone die around here and not tell me? That's how she dresses. She's an acting coach. Oh, great. Just kill me now and get it over with. <laughs> she needs an acting coach? Here? What for? I'm her fucking director! Marilyn enters. At her side is Paula Strasberg, a middle-aged woman in a black dress, black stockings, black hat, and black veil. My, you people are up early, aren't you? It might be early summer, sweetheart, but here it's half past noon. Half past noon? No fooling. Well, they say time passes differently in the desert, so I guess they weren't kidding. You know Paula, don't you? Uh, no, no, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Why of... is everyone sitting around? I thought you people had a scene to shoot. Well, isn't that what you said, Marilyn? Aren't they supposed to be shooting a scene right now? Paula always dressed in black. No one could ever figure out why. I mean, come on, wearing black in a desert? There's no rhyme or reason. That was Paula. Always going against the grain. Always going against everyone's grain. Let's on the Misfits set. Marilyn is seated, seemingly deep in thought, her eyes closed tight. Paula stands behind her, her hands massaging Marilyn's shoulders. John, Clark, Monty, and Eli are all off to the side, standing and observing, eyes flared wide as if they can't believe what they're seeing. You feel you're ready? Almost, I'm not quite there yet. That's okay. Take your time. There's no rush. Jesus! <laughs> Neither Marilyn nor Paula seems to have heard him. Paula continues to massage Marilyn's shoulders. Just feel the flow, Marilyn. Just feel the flow. Now remember, you are a swan, and I am your stream. You are a butterfly, and I am your flower. She's more like a cow patty in the pasture, if you ask me. Did you just say something, John? Oh, no, no, no. Just uh, some directorly words for Clark, that's all. OK, I think I'm ready now. You're sure? Yeah, I'm good. Eli, are you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, too. That's good. Because guess what? I'm also good. So, now that all three of us are good, maybe we could try to shoot this one little piddling scene before nightfall, okay? Eli, when you hear the music, I want you to grab Marilyn's arm like this, and then pull her close like so, all right? I just want to see the two of you dance together. No dialogue, just dancing, okay? Got it. Okay, then, let's go. Cue the music and action. The record plays swing music from the 50s. 
Eli takes hold of Marilyn and they begin to dance. There's a slight awkwardness and an unpolished feel to their movements, as if they're strangers and they don't yet know what to expect from each other. John stops them after 15 or 20 seconds. Cut, cut. That is good. Okay, now I want you to do it again, exactly the same, except this time with dialogue. I don't think so. What? But Rosalind and Guido, they're not fully connected. Of course they're not connecting. They're not supposed to connect. That's the whole point of the scene. That's the whole point of the whole fucking movie. Marilyn? Well, maybe we can just connect halfway. How would that be, John? Except for Marilyn, we all hate it, Paul. The other actors, the crew, John most of all. We called her Black Bart and her dark presence cast a long and ominous shadow over the entire shoot. Paula was always giving Marilyn advice. She was always giving John advice. For God's sake, she was even giving me advice. But then again, in those years, it seemed like everyone was giving me advice, especially advice about Marilyn, whether I wanted it or not. Spotlight on Saul Bellow was Linda Mannes in his early 40s. You want to hear my advice, Arthur? Four years earlier, in 1956, I'd come to Nevada like so many others to cast one spouse aside and hook up with another. Out with Mary, in with Marilyn. It was all so as easy as one, two, three. Bring me some cash, just wait six weeks, and presto, changeo. Sign right here on the dotted line. So I rented a place on the outskirts of Reno, right across the road from a guy I just happened to know. A guy who just happened to be in a similar rental, uh, sim similar rental uh, for a similar reason playing out a similar tale of divorce and remarriage in a dance with the same steps as mine. Perhaps you've heard of him, Saul Bellin, a writer with a string of awards and an even a longer string of opinions. Though in the year 1956, it seemed as if most of Saul's opinions were directed at me. You want to hear my advice, Arthur? Sure, Saul. What's your advice? Sleep with him. Shlup up. Well, whatever else you do, just don't matter. Enough. When I first met Marilyn back in 51, Mary a soul knew who she was, but within a couple of years she tossed the world on its ear and everyone who ever scanned a newspaper or flipped through a magazine knew exactly who she was. In fact, everyone who ever scanned a newspaper or flipped through a magazine seemed to know damn near everything about her. But then, in 1954, Marilyn shocked me and everyone else by stealing home with Joe DiMaggio. Marriage made in heaven, right? Wrong. They were together less than a year. Bad news for Joe, good news for me. Funny thing though, they say Jolt and Joe never really got over her. In time, I would know that feeling. But in the spring of 1956, I was still in the batter's box, feverishly waiting my turn at the plate. Let's on Arthur and Saul Bellows sitting across the table, each drinking the bottle of coke. Arthur, did you even hear what I just said? What? Sleep with her. Stupa, or whatever else you do, just don't marry her. But I want to marry her. Why? Probably for the same reason you want to marry Sonia. Wrong. It's clearly not for the same reason I want to marry Sonia. And you know why? Because Sandra is an actual woman, not some fantasy goddess on a Times Square billboard. And Marilyn's also an actual woman, and despite all your joking around, a woman that I just happen to love. Oh, come on, boy chick, I see it in your eyes. You don't actually love her. You love the concept of her the cultural significance of her. That's not true. Okay, so maybe you also like her ass. I mean, what's there not to like, right? But love, Arthur? For now and the rest of time, please. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no, on the contrary, I know exactly what I'm talking about. You know who she is, Arthur? She's the ultimate shikster. Yeah, that's who she is. She's blonde, she's blue-eyed, and she's got a figure that's a hazard to oncoming traffic, and actually traffic in both directions. And you know what else she is, Arthur? She's everything your mother ever wanted you to buy. My mother likes her. No, she doesn't. No mother would like her. <laughs> well, my father likes her. <laughs> Believe me, your father I can understand. I'm telling you, son, you got this all wrong. It's called denial, Arthur. I'm sure that my sugar and a head shrinker of yours can fill in all the details. You just don't know her like I do. I, if you did, you'd see what I see, what an absolute, absolute prize she Oh, she's a prize, all right. Yes, that much I'll grant you. She's a veritable trophy with this. Stop it, Saul. I know women, Arthur, and trust me, this one has needs you're never going to fill. Not you, not anyone. Plus, whatever your needs are, you might think she's the answer, but believe me, she's not. 
You know something, Saul? If I didn't know better, I swear you were jealous. You'll save your swearing for later, Bob, because my prediction is you're going to be doing more than your share of it down the road. And let's talk about something else, okay? Well, sure, we can talk about whatever you'd like to talk about. Sports, weather, Red China, whatever. Only take my advice. Want a prize? Go win yourself another Pulitzer. You want some heartburn, a major heartache? Go marry this girl. But don't say I didn't warn you. And the truth was, Saul did know it. After all, experience does count for something, and he'd eventually marry five of them. But when it came to Marilyn and me, I, I just couldn't bring myself to believe him. Just starting out. And besides, we really did have days together that were thoroughly glorious. Or at least, that's what we told ourselves at the time. And that stretch of uninterrupted peace and harmony lasted, well, a while. A good three weeks or so. 